Hello, sports fans. It is Tuesday, December the 2nd, the year 2014. And as always, a lot to get to in the sports world, so let's get it going right now. Great to be back with you guys. College football picks and NFL football picks coming up shortly. Let's quickly touch on the Monday Night Football game from last night where the Miami Dolphins rally in the rainy Meadowlands and beat the New York Jets 16-13. Miami up to 7-5, Jets down to 2-10. I'll tell you, the Jets led for a lot of this game, but like I always say, like I said yesterday about the Cincinnati-Tampa Bay game, good teams find a way to win, and bad teams always seem to find a way to lose, and that's what happened to the Jets last night. Jets had their opportunities. They led, like I said, for a lot of this game. The Jets missed two big field goals. Dolphins rally late in the fourth quarter. They take the lead, and then Geno Smith throws the bad interception over the middle of the field, and that seals the deal for Miami. And Miami escapes with a much-needed win. And with the win, Miami goes into that last wild-card spot. Very important win for the Dolphins last night. And I didn't think the Dolphins played well at all yesterday. I mean, the Dolphins did a terrible job stopping the run. The Dolphins, even though they have Mike Wallace on the outside, they were not throwing the ball deep at all. I don't know what's going on with that Miami offense. They make no big plays down the field. Jets, I don't know what you can say about Geno Smith. He only threw the ball 13 times the whole game. Yes, the Jets were running the ball well, but you got to find out what you have here with Geno Smith. You're not even letting him throw the ball at all. 13 passes the whole game? I mean, what is this, Army? Is this Army against Navy? 13 passes in an NFL game? I don't know what you do with Geno Smith going forward. I am not a big believer in him. I didn't think the Jets uh, should have drafted him that high. I certainly don't believe in Michael Vick. There's a lot of quarterbacks available in the draft this year. The Jets take another quarterback. Remember, the Florida State quarterback is coming out. The UCLA quarterback is coming out. The Oregon quarterback is coming out. There's a bunch of good young quarterbacks in the draft. A lot of free agents in the NFL. Maybe the Jets trade for Robert Griffin. To me, I would go in a different direction. I do not trust Geno Smith, and the Jets don't even try to let him make a play. I mean, 13 passes the whole game, so the Dolphins escape with a much-needed win. Dolphins had to have this game. This would have been a terrible loss for Miami. They escape, they get the win, and they go into that last wild-card spot. Okay, without further ado, let's get to our college football picks for week number 15 as we are in the conference championship games I mean after this all you have is Army Navy and then we get into the bowls and the final four playoff how fast does college football go by I just remember Labor Day we were just talking about college football getting going and it's already over I mean unbelievable how fast the college football season goes now, as far as me, I was 23 games over 500 the first 11 weeks of the college football season. I have fallen apart the last three weeks. I have gone to 15 games over. Overall, still a nice record, but I have had three terrible weeks, getting a lot of bad breaks, losing on a lot of backdoor covers. Most of the teams I'm picking are winning, but they're not covering the spread, which makes it even more frustrating. That's where the analyst in me, you know, takes over as far as the better in me. I sometimes think of the games as an analyst, like who's going to win, and that sometimes affects my betting, you know, because I could never take, like, some of these bad teams. Like, I'll never take Jacksonville in the NFL, but half the time they cover the spread Jacksonville. So that's a perfect example right there. Sometimes the analyst in me gets in way of the better of me. Let's see if I can do better this week. Let's see if I can get back to my winning ways. I got a bunch of picks for you in college football. Let's start with the ACC championship game in Charlotte where the Florida State Seminoles are minus three and a half against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Florida State, of course, 12 and 0. They have the big winning streak, defending national champions. They win this game during the Final Four playoffs. Georgia Tech, a solid season, 10 and 2. They did lose to Duke in North Carolina, but they've been playing well lately. Had the big win against arch rival uh, Georgia. You know, Georgia Tech's offense is a handful with that option. A lot of teams don't like playing that style. To me, when I looked at this spread, I said, "Are you kidding me? It's only three and a half." Now I know Florida State struggles. And I know they're in a dogfight every week, but they find ways to win each and every week. And I don't think Georgia Tech, with their option offense, is going to be enough to beat Florida State. I mean, I think Florida State's got too much talent on the field to lose to a Georgia Tech in this spot. 
I think Winston, who's played bad the last few weeks, especially last week, will play a lot better in this game. I think this spread is way too low. I think Florida State wins this game by double digits. I like Florida State to win this game and get to the Final Four playoff. Pick number one, Florida State minus 3.5 against Georgia Tech in Charlotte. Pick number two, let's go to the Big Ten title game in Indianapolis where the Wisconsin Badgers are minus 3.5 against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Wisconsin is 10-2. and two. They are on absolute fire. They lost early to LSU and Northwestern, believe it or not, but since then their offense is unstoppable. That running game is unstoppable. They've been on absolute fire. Ohio State is 11-1. They are now down to their third-string quarterback. Ohio State, of course, lost that bad game to Virginia Tech early in the year at home. They were cruising, though, on offense the last few weeks, Ohio State, but now they lose their second quarterback. I don't know what you could possibly expect from Ohio State with their third-string quarterback going against this Wisconsin team who is on fire. I'm sorry, i got to go with Wisconsin here. They're on fire. They score a lot of points. Ohio State's defense is not good. Ohio State's calling card is their offense, and now with the third-string quarterback, I don't know how good they're going to be on offense. I think Wisconsin is too much in this spot. It's asking way too much for Ohio State and their third-string quarterback to be a red-hot Wisconsin team. So I will take Wisconsin minus 3.5 against Ohio State in the Big Ten title game. I think this will knock Ohio State out of the four-team playoff. If Ohio State happens to win this game, I think they would get in. I don't think they're going to have enough, though. I think they will be out of the four-team playoff. Wisconsin wins the Big Ten title. All right, let's go to Connecticut, where the UConn Huskies at home are minus 11 against the SMU Mustangs. Yes, I am picking this game. UConn is 2-9, and nine and they are a terrible team. SMU is 0-11 and probably one of the worst teams in college football history. They have been blown out each and every week this, this year, SMU. They have not been competitive in any game. In any game, they lost their quarterback, they lost their coach. The program is a mess. Uh, there's been rumblings that they might shut down the program, kind of like UAB. UAB might shut down their program. SMU, there's been rumblings they might shut down their program. Now, I know Connecticut is awful, but Connecticut does have a, to have a home win against Central Florida this year. And Central Florida is a decent team. So if Connecticut can beat Central Florida at home, I know they can beat this bad SMU team. This is a game I normally would never take, but I am taking UConn minus 11 at home against SMU. SMU completes the 0-12 season. Let's go to Atlanta for the big SEC title game with the Alabama Crimson Tide or minus 14 and a half against the Missouri Tigers. Alabama, of course, 11 and 1. They're only lost to Ole Miss. Missouri having a very surprising year again, 10-2. and two. They lost early to Indiana and Georgia, but they've been on fire since they get to another SEC title game. Missouri's one of these teams that sneaks up on you. I like Mork as the quarterback. He hasn't had a great sophomore year. He was really good as a freshman, kind of regressed a little bit as a sophomore. I still like him. The Missouri defense is very solid. They don't give up a lot of points. To me, this is not a vintage Alabama team. I know they can still get to the Final Four playoff. I know they can probably still win it. They've been in a lot of close games this year. They lost to Ole Miss. They could have very easily lost to Arkansas. They should have lost to LSU. They beat Mississippi State by five. I mean, they have not blown out many teams. Even last week against Auburn, they were losing for a lot of that game. And if it wasn't for Auburn, switch cheese defense, Auburn might have pulled the upset in Tuscaloosa. I mean, other than Texas A&M, Alabama hasn't really blown out many teams other than the little teams. Do I think Alabama's going to lose this game? No. Do I think Missouri can hang around? Yes. I think it's going to be a defensive game, and Missouri is a defensive team. I think Missouri does just enough to hang in the game, just enough to cover the spread. Alabama probably gets through, probably gets to the Final Four playoff. But I'm going to roll the dice here, and I'm going to take Missouri plus 14.5 with their defense Alabama coming off the high against Auburn. Maybe they don't play as well this week. Not a vintage Alabama team. I think Missouri does just enough to hang in the game. I will take Missouri plus 14 and a half against Alabama in Atlanta, although I do think Alabama will win. Let's go to Norman, Oklahoma, the Bedlam series with the Oklahoma Sooners on minus 19 against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. To me, Oklahoma's had a very disappointing year at 8-3. and three. Oklahoma State is having, having an even more disappointing year at 5-6, and six, and they've lost five straight games. 
This is one of those rivalries that is completely one-sided. Oklahoma dominates this series. Very few times has Oklahoma State won this game. Now, there's a lot of problems at quarterback for both teams. Both teams are playing without their starting quarterback, so you're going to have the backup quarterbacks in. I think Oklahoma is way too much for Oklahoma State. I think Oklahoma's running game is going to be way too much. Like I said, Oklahoma State has lost five straight games and have been blown out five straight games. Oklahoma very rarely loses in Norman, and they never lose to Oklahoma State anywhere. I think Oklahoma is going to cruise here. Oklahoma seems to do well at the end of the year after disappointing uh, me in the middle of the year. They always seem to come on at the end of the year. I think Oklahoma rolls in this game, beats their arch rival. I like Oklahoma at home, minus 19 against Oklahoma State. Let's go to Waco, Texas, where the Big 12 title will be decided. This is where college game day is. The Baylor Bears are minus 9.5 against the Kansas State Wildcats. It looks like Petty, the quarterback for Baylor, will play. Baylor 11-1, only lost to West Virginia. Kansas State 9-2, they've lost to Auburn and TCU. You know I love Bill Snyder as the coach. I love Bryles as the coach of Baylor as well. If Baylor wins this game, I think they will make the Final Four playoff because I think Ohio State is going to lose. So this is a monster game. I think the spread's a little too high, though. Every time I've taken Baylor this year, given up big points, they've won and haven't covered. I think that could be the case again here. I think Baylor wins. I think they probably get to the Final Four playoff. But I have enough respect for Bill Snyder and that Kansas State team that I think it's going to be close. I think Kansas State hangs in the game, much like the Alabama-Missouri game. The favorite probably wins, but I'm going to grab the points here, and I'm saying the game's closer than most people think. I will take Kansas State plus 9.5 at Baylor. I mean, I think Baylor will squeak through, but I have a lot of respect for Bill Snyder and that Kansas State team. I think it's going to be closer than most people think. So Kansas State plus nine and a half at Baylor in a monster game. Uh, <clears throat> let's go to Fort Worth with the TCU Horn Frogs on minus 31 against the Iowa State Cyclones. TCU, of course, is 10-1. and one. They had that bad loss to Baylor when they blew a 21-point lead. They could have had that game. If they would have won that game, they would have been in the Final Four playoff. Now they're going to need help. Iowa State is 2-9. and nine. They've lost five straight. They are abominable this year. TCU has to get it done this week. They have to impress everybody. TCU's got to put, put up a bundle of points. To me, TCU, TCU probably needs two teams to lose in front of them. I mean, they probably need Ohio State to lose and either like a Baylor, an Oregon, a Florida State, or an Alabama, one of those teams to lose. So they're going to probably need two teams to lose, and they're going to have to win and do it in style. They have the perfect opponent for it. They're home. Iowa State is awful. They've lost five in a row. They give up a ton of points. TCU put up like 84 points on Texas Tech. I think TCU could score 60 in this game. I like TCU to just roll over Ohio, uh, Iowa State and try and impress the committee. Like I said, I think TCU will need help. And my last pick, let's go to the Pac-12 title game in Santa Clara, home of the San Francisco 49ers, where the Oregon Ducks are minus 14 and a half against the Arizona Wildcats. Oregon 11 and 1, they've won seven straight since losing at home to Arizona, who they also lost to last year. Arizona has had a fabulous year under Rich Rodriguez. They are 10-2. and two. They only lost a close game to USC and a close game to UCLA. They've been in every game they've played. To me, they're showing no respect for Arizona, and I know Oregon can put up a bundle of points, and the games can get out of hand in a hurry, and it's always risky going against Oregon. They could score 21 points in five minutes. But they're not showing any respect here for Arizona. Arizona has beaten Oregon in the last two years. Arizona scores a lot of points themselves. Arizona has an opportunistic defense. I think Arizona's going to hang in, around in this game. Probably another game where the favorite gets through. But i got to grab the points here. i got to show a little respect to Arizona. They beat Oregon in Eugene this year. They bombed them in Tucson last year. 14 and a half points. Not showing any respect for Arizona. Arizona hasn't been blown out at all this year. And Oregon, they can be spotty on defense. They can be soft on defense. If things don't go Oregon's way, they can kind of be soft. Now, like I said, it's risky. Oregon's rolling right now, putting up a ton of points. I think Arizona, with their offense, does just enough. Maybe they get a backdoor cover. You know, I've been losing some of those backdoor covers. Maybe I get a few backdoor covers uh, myself this week and change the momentum for me. I'm going to take Arizona plus 14.5 against Oregon in the Pac-12 title game. And remember, the new rankings come out for your college football tonight. 
To me, Alabama, Florida State, Oregon, they all win. They're in. I think if Ohio State happens to win the game with their third-string quarterback, they're in. I don't think they're going to do it. Baylor then would be the next team up. I think they would go ahead of TCU because they beat TCU. TCU is going to need some help. They're going to probably need a couple of teams to lose. So in review, here are my picks for the college football. I like Arizona plus 14.5 against Oregon. I like TCU minus 31 against Iowa State. I like Kansas State plus 9.5 against Baylor. I like Oklahoma minus 19 against Oklahoma State. I like Missouri plus 14 and a half against Alabama. I like UConn minus 11 against SMU. I like Wisconsin minus three and a half against Ohio State. And I like Florida State minus three and a half against Georgia Tech. We'll see if I can do better this week than I've done the last three weeks in college football. All right, so you're all set with your college football this week. Let's get to the NFL. NFL week 14 picks. My high water mark for the year for the NFL was 19 over. I have now dropped a little bit to 16 over. Still having a solid year in the NFL. Didn't have a great week last week. Lost another game where I picked Miami. They win, but they don't cover. How many times has that happened? Just like the Cincinnati Bengal game, they win, don't cover. That's happened to me a ton of times in the NFL and college football lately. But that's how it works. In the beginning of the year, those games were going my way. I'm starting to give a few of them back now. All right, without further ado, i got four picks for you in the NFL, and then I will touch on the rest of the games. A lot of big games in the NFL this week. <clears throat> Pick number one, let's go down to New Orleans. Here we go again with New Orleans. The New Orleans Saints are minus 9.5 against the Carolina Panthers. It's funny, I picked New Orleans, what, all three weeks they played at home uh, you know, when they lost all three games at home. Then I pick against them against Pittsburgh, and they win that game. Is New Orleans possibly going to lose a fourth straight home game? Not happening. Carolina can't beat anyone. They can't beat the local high school team here. Carolina's falling completely apart. Bloom is off the rose for Cam Newton. They can't score. They can't defend. They're a mess. They are just done. Carolina is finished. New Orleans had the big win at Pittsburgh. They're not going to lose their fourth straight home game. Not to Carolina. They played Carolina a few weeks ago in Carolina and bombed them. It should be even worse down here in the Superdome. New Orleans fighting for the playoffs with Atlanta. New Orleans rolls in this game. They win this game by double digits. No messing around for New Orleans. Drew Brees has a monster day. Pick number one, New Orleans in the Superdome. Minus nine and a half against an awful Carolina team. Pick number two, let's go out to Denver. With the Denver Broncos on minus 10 against the Buffalo Bills. Denver's fighting with New England for best record in the NFL. You don't think, uh, best record in the AFC, I should say, you don't think they're going to lose at home to Buffalo, do you? I mean, it's not going to happen. Like Kansas City, Buffalo can't get into a firefight with Denver. Denver is too high scoring. As much as I like the Buffalo defense, you're asking an awful lot for them to shut down this Denver offense. And I don't think the Bill offense is going to be able to keep up with the Denver offense. Once Denver gets rolling at home, they usually score a ton of points. I think Denver rolls in this game. Once they get going, it's like an avalanche out there. Denver will not be sloppy at home here, knowing they can pass New England. I think Denver will win this game, will cover the game. I like Denver minus 10 against Buffalo. Too much on the line for Denver. They're battling with New England for that top spot in the AFC. That alone will have a motivator for this game. Pick number two is Denver. Pick number three, let's go to Detroit. With the Detroit Lions on minus nine against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Detroit got back to their winning ways last week when they bombed uh, Chicago in the second half on Thanksgiving Day. Detroit is right there for the playoffs. They're a game behind Green Bay for the division. Detroit cannot afford any slip-ups. Tampa Bay is a bad team. I know they were close last week against Cincinnati, but they found a way to lose. That was a home game. I can't take Tampa Bay here. Detroit has way too much on the line. Detroit's defense should dominate Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay should not put up more than, you know, 10 points in this game. I think Detroit will score a bunch of points. I like Detroit at home, minus 9 against Tampa Bay. That's pick number 3. And pick number 4, let's go out to Oakland. Here I go again with the Niners. How many times do I go back on them? I can't stay away from them. The San Francisco 49ers are minus 7 against the Oakland Raiders. And I know the Niners don't score, and they've had a bunch of trouble on their offensive line, and Kaepernick struggling. But the Raiders just lost to the Rams 52 to nothing. And I know this is a rivalry game. There'll be a ton of Niner fans in the house. San Francisco can't mess around here. They're 7-5. and five. They're on the outside looking in. They have to win basically all their games to get to the playoffs. 
they can't fool around here and lose to a dreadful Oakland team. San Francisco's defense should shut down Oakland. Oakland didn't score any points against St. Louis. The Niner defense is solid. I can't see the Raiders upset in San Francisco. I know they beat Kansas City two weeks ago. I can't see lightning striking again here. I think San Francisco is going to win this game. If San Francisco is ever going to have a big effort, it's going to be here against a rival, against a bad Raider team when they have to have the game. It's now or never, Niners. What are you going to show me? I've been on them a bunch of times this year. I'm trying to stay with them. Show me something, San Francisco. Go out there and bomb Oakland. I like San Francisco minus 7 against Oakland. So my four picks, I like New Orleans minus 9.5 against Carolina. Denver minus 10 against Buffalo. Detroit minus 9 against Tampa. And San Francisco minus 7 against Oakland. I'll tell you, there are a lot of tough games in the NFL. The Thursday night game, Dallas uh, at Chicago. You would expect Dallas to get through, but I mean, you know those Thursday night games with the home team. Very strange stuff happens on Thursday night. I would expect Dallas to get through, though. Chicago's defense is awful. Must win for Dallas. Miami at home against Baltimore. Huge game for both teams. I mean, I could go either way on that game. I mean, Baltimore doesn't play all that well on the road. Cincinnati at home, minus three against Pittsburgh. What are you going to get from the Steelers? I mean, what are you going to get from them? The Steelers score 50 points one week, then they lay an egg against New Orleans. They lose to Tampa. They barely beat Jacksonville. They barely beat Tennessee. They lose to the Jets. What are you going to get from Pittsburgh? This is probably a must win for Pittsburgh. And Cincinnati, I mean, they are in solid shape for the division, and they very rarely lose at home. Indianapolis uh, at Cleveland, very interesting game. Both teams, you know, fighting for playoff position. Indianapolis is going to win their division. Cleveland's still alive in the playoffs. Is Manziel playing? Uh, Houston minus uh, four and a half at Jacksonville. You'd think Houston would win this game, but who knows? They're inconsistent. Fitzpatrick is inconsistent at quarterback. Here's a beautiful game. Tennessee at home against the Giants. Who's going to win that game? Giants just lost to Jacksonville. Uh, St. Louis at Washington. I mean, to me, St. Louis looks like the better team now, but you never know with them either. You can't really trust them. Minnesota at home against the Jets. Talk about an awful game. I mean, I would think Minnesota would win there. Arizona at home against Kansas City. I mean, what are you going to get from Arizona from here on out? Uh, Philadelphia at home against Seattle. What a monster game that is for both teams. I mean, talk about a contrast of styles. I mean, Philadelphia wants to sling it all over the field, and Seattle wants to, you know, pound you all day. What a contrast in styles that is. Uh, New England at San Diego, the Sunday night game. Big game for both teams. New England fighting with Denver, best record in the AFC. San Diego fighting for their playoff lives. Tremendous game there. And the Monday night game, a lot of playoff ramifications. Atlanta at Green Bay. You'd expect Green Bay to win. I don't think Atlanta's offense can, uh, Atlanta's defense can tangle with Green Bay's offense, but the spread is 11 and a half, a little high, but you'd think Green Bay would win that game. So there are a lot of tough games in the NFL this week. A lot of games that could go either. Either way, should be a really, really nice week in college and the NFL as far as games to watch over the weekend. Okay, you guys are all set. You have my picks. Hopefully, I do better this week. You guys, enjoy the games. Thanks for the support. I will be back with you guys Monday. We will recap everything that's gone on in the NFL, the college football, you know, college basketball, NBA, NHL, you know, anything that comes up in the sports world. We'll recap it on Monday. You guys enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the games. Stay happy, healthy, and safe. Thanks for the support. I'll talk to you Monday. Take care.